Chopping and roasting Yeah, that's what we do Set them up, knock them down Make that cherry glow Whiskey and cigars The gentleman's cologne Cheers, y'all. Sounds like a party just about to begin, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza known internationally Hi, Mom. as the world famous Smoking and Toasting. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. And boy, are we looking forward to all of those things today. I'm already started on this thing. Come <laughs> yes, on. <laughs> and I've uh, already lit a cigar as well myself. <laughs> we are on the famous front porch. At Jim Himes' residence, we've done a show here before with Jim, and it was a whole heck of a lot of fun. But we're here today because today, on show number 406, which, by the way, has us halfway to 500. Yes, but, yes. Well, you do the math. It okay. comes out. On show number 406 today, it is Bring Your Dad to the Show Day. And our special guest, <laughs> our special guest, Abby Heim from Great Heights Brewing is here, Hello. along with her dad, friend of the show, Jim Heim. It's a it's a very small <laughs> circle we run in here right there at Smoking and Justin, which sounds better. I was going to say in it's kind of like chasing but that, that would have sounded really horrible, so I didn't go there. Uh, <laughs> Thank so, you for that. Yeah, please. appreciate that. Uh, no, we uh, it, it's it's interesting because uh, I was actually introduced to Jim and his family uh, by my wife, who has known them for years, and it just so happens that Abby is the wonderful representative from Great Heights Brewing here in Houston. They are not only uh, a, a local brewery. They're one of the best local breweries, and they're one of my particular favorites, and I know you w would agree with oh, that. Oh, well, I mean, she brought barley wine today. Uh, so, yeah, I was going to get to that. Ian, if Ian looks extra happy, it's because Abby brought barley wine. <laughs> uh, and she brought a lot of other things, too, so Abby, we're excited about getting into tasting. I understand some of what you brought is kind of like special stuff, yes. too. <clears throat> I brought our seventh anniversary, which is like a German chocolate stout oh that will never do yeah <laughs> like 9.5 percent and then i brought back i brought our denali which is a really aggressive west coast ipa oh i won't like that at all <laughs> <laughs> we haven't brewed that in about three years so oh, we're really cool. excited to have that back well we are excited to be here and tasting it today <clears throat> on the program today and so we're really excited about that now abby also brought and this is certainly not a requirement <laughs> So she's going above and beyond. She also brought our spirit for today. Or spirits, That's I should pretty say. Pretty awesome. And they're sitting on the table next to me over here. This is Bingham's Bourbon and the Bingham's Bourbon Black. And for those who are not familiar with Ryan Bingham, you should be. He's a really wonderful music artist. He's also an actor, and he's on Yellowstone, among other things. That would be why I don't know. And, yeah, right, right. But you, you know the music part, just not, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, just not the acting part. But in any case, with Yellowstone finally back for its finale, our timing is good. And I'm yeah, anxious to try. That's true. I'm anxious to try this because even though some celebrity spirits are somewhat suspect, Ryan Bingham seems to be such an authentic guy. You know, I've seen him interviewed and, and read some of the interviews that he's done. Seems to be such an authentic guy that I just have a feeling that this is going to be pretty good. But we'll see. I'm excited about that. So, do want to give a big thanks to last week's special guest, Dominic Sung and Todd Grube from the Whiskey Social. Uh, they were so guys. fun. Yeah, they, they were. So they fun. were fun. Can't wait we, to do the Whiskey Social. Yeah, coming up here, we're going to have them back on after the Whiskey Social to get a recap as well. Yeah, and uh, and so it's going to be. It'll be all good. That would be like a debriefing. Exactly. A debriefing has That's to be exactly nice what it is. So, uh, I need to practice my debriefing techniques. And then finally, big thanks to our show sponsor for this month for the uh, show beers, our friends at the Lone Pint Brewery in Magnolia. And uh, we're all enjoying a yellow rose here. So uh, that makes today started off on a very good foot as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Ian, what are you smoking you can, there, buddy? You can definitely start days worse. A yellow rose... Smash IPA, and this is the um, Oscar Valdez 2012 oh, Barbershop nice. Pole. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah, I love that guy. Dude, I love all of his, all cigars, of his cigars, man. Cigars They're so good. good. I'm such. I'm kind of. I'm a little bit of an Oscar Valdez fanboy. We need to get him on the show at some point. He's from Houston, as far as I know. Uh, that would be well. Maybe is he, is he from Houston? Or he's based in Houston. Either he's, one. He's got a huge warehouse here. 
Yeah. 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 Tell me where it is. I'll go there late what? at night when all the uh, security guards are asleep. <laughs> clip, clip. <laughs> Got me some cigars. I've been watching way too many movies. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we would love to have him on the show. So Oscar, if you're out there, Oscar. Uh, yeah, let's let's do this. That'd be uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm smoking an Arroya. Uh, the first twenty years. Uh, Eroa. I always say Eroa, but it's Eroa. Eroa. The first 20 years, it's a uh, really wonderful cigar, and Christian Eroa or Eroa is uh, is a great cigar maker. So this is uh, this is starting us off on a really good note here, as far as yeah, brother of uh, Usto. Yes, and uh, son of Julio. Julio. Yeah. So, or did we get that backwards? No, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, good. Uh, We got to hang with Usto and Julio when we were in Honduras. Uh, visiting the Aladino farms, and that was another great yeah, experience. Yeah, that was so. That was most so, of a week, and that was fantastic. Almost as cool though as the front porch. This is just <laughs> this is the most chill cigar smoking area ever. This beats any cigar lounge in my mind. I concur. Yeah. So this is. I also love that this is eight minutes from my house. Yeah. See, that works out pretty well too. In fact, I'm a little surprised Jim doesn't come home from time to time to find you on his front just, porch, just, well, just enjoying a, a there cigar. There was that one time. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not at all surprised. So, uh, all right. So uh, on today's show, we're going to talk about a number of things, including uh, some wonderful Great Heights beers and the spirits that we mentioned. We'll tell you about some cigars to watch for, and we'll bring you uh, two of the more uh, favorite uh, segments on the program. One we'll do actually here in this first segment, and that is our drinking fact and our drinking fact uh, teaser for you. I don't know if you have the oh, uh, ukulele. Uh, ukulele yeah. time. Yeah, uh, sorry, I surprised <laughs> you there. Our drinking fact uh, teaser headline today is. Could you say that in Spanish, please? <laughs> And, of course, the single most popular segment on the program is Drinking News. We'll do that in the second hour. And our Drinking News teaser headline for today is... Oh, the shark bites with his teeth near. That works better than the rest of the song. Uh, So, yeah, shark bites with his teeth. We'll get to that. So much to do. Oh, and it's time to do our uh, drinking facts. So I don't know if we have the usual reverb that we like to apply to this, but maybe Terry could go ahead and introduce our, uh, I'm sorry, not drinking fact, but our beverage of mystery. Oh, the beverage of of mystery song here. Okay. (laughs) And the beverage of mystery music is called The Visitor. It is by Shane Ivers. You can find his stuff at Chosick. Dot com. Thank you, Shane. Uh, so today's beverage of mystery. I brought this one. Nobody else knows what it is. We'll all. Uh, this has like almost no nose to it. Do a little. Sn- yeah. It just kind okay, of smells, a little like, bit. smells like beer. There's mm-hmm. a little little hoppy thing going on. Mm-hmm. Real close to it. Get some brightness. There is. There's definitely some there's citrus sort yeah. of uh, brightness to it, isn't there? Mm-hmm. So. This may seem like a very normal beverage for a beverage of mystery. Usually it's something a little more unusual or a seltzer or a canned cocktail or maybe a very unusual beer. Ian, you find anything unusual in this beer? It's a little thin on the finish. Um, and there's a flavor in there. Yeah. Is this like a, a THC beer or something? No, like that? no, that's, that's a good guess. There's a something on the back end of that that I'm not is, and there's, it's real thin, like, the mouthfeel up front is bigger than the finish. The finish is almost... It's a weak finish. Yeah. Abby, thoughts? <clears throat> it definitely, at the very end, has this, like, kind of pop to it. Let me see. Not, like, you get a little more flavor, like, after the swallow. And it's... it's I'm not sure. I'm you getting like a little bit more tropical. <laughs> We're all mystified. Yeah. Well, that's I'm the, definitely getting that's tropical. Like a little bit. I I would I would definitely want to say it's like an IPA or a pale ale. Um, and the hops on it. Um, I'm not sure. Well, that is yeah, the it's point. definitely citrusy, almost well, have, like lemon. Yeah, it leaves it astringent on the uh, in on the uh, palate too. Well, I'll go ahead and do the reveal. This is called Sport Prep. Oh. It is a Citra Hopped American Pale Ale. And go, it's from Hop uh, And the reason that I brought it is that it apparently has got some pepper infusion to it. Is that what it is? As you see from the pepper. Oh. 
And I had actually tried this. Maybe that's that kind of almost tinny taste to it. That I had actually tried this and found it to be the first beer with pepper in it that I didn't hate. It's got actual pepper instead yeah. of getting that note from the hot. Uh, now, that's a good question. Uh, Maybe it, it has doesn't some really notes? reveal I'll that. I'll be honest, oh, I don't know if I'd reach for this again. Citra. Yeah, but you can see the, the pepper guy is pretty prominent there on yeah. the can. The pepper that's, guy looks awesome. Oh, I love this can, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I, don't I, I think little, I like the can better than I like the beer. I get a little tinge of I'm not something. really into yeah, aerobics. Just <laughs> all, we're getting this all from the hops. So yeah, fresh citrus and some juicy mango and candied orange. Very so, cool. So why do you think they? they uh, why do you think if there's no pepper in it, why do you think they put the pepper? On? Uh, I mean, are y'all are y'all getting a little bit of pepper? I, I'm getting that? a little something. I yep. think I am a little. But it's bit. not there's like almost, yeah. I can taste that there was some sort of pepper in there. It's like not. Melt, like it's, it's not, not nearly melt, as pepper forward as like uh, and and also the fact that it's an American pale ale uh, because if you remember, probably my least favorite beer in the world. Even lower than Mon Montucky Cold Snack what? is the uh, Dos Equis Mexican oh, yeah. Pale it's, Ale it's that has good. pepper. That is undrinkable oh, wait, no. beer. A pepper is like, yeah, they're usually pretty prominent. So, it sticks in your line. Years mm. ago, uh, No Label made one called Don Jalapeno. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And That's I bought a six than... pack and I tried it and I, I was like, I just don't like jalapeno in my drink. Agreed. I think it was fine, but it made some. Damn fine brats. Oh, <laughs> oh I bet it did. But, <laughs> or a good michelada if you're oh, trying yeah. to get through it. Yeah. What was that little brewery we went to after this Julep? They had a pineapple, uh, it was a jalapeno beer, but jalapeno? it wasn't. Remember, there was a jalapeno, I think it was pineapple jalapeno. Oh, and that was. Whatever uh, the process they that, did, it didn't platypus. have the. I was about to say, oh, it didn't, yeah. It, yeah, it didn't take the. It, it wasn't very spicy <clears throat> or anything. You could get the little bit of the flavor of the jalapeno, but without it See, being. See, my very, wife will drink the spicy drinks like that. She likes the, the jalapeno and those kind of infused things. It's just not my thing. Yeah, yeah, see, it wasn't, that was the thing. It just didn't have that spicy that you would expect to me. That. So it made it okay. I think this is, whatever technique they use, this must have used the same thing to not make it hot, but still you can, you know, yeah, it, it, you can still the taste essence. it a little bit. Yeah. Of jalapeno. Yes. Exactly. I've always felt that spice is wonderful in food, but I want a non-spicy drink to wash it down. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, <laughs> I always feel like, like as spicy as I can have food, I always feel like when I drink something with spice, it just sticks right here mm -hmm. at the back of the throat. It Agreed. Just won't I go love away. juicy IP, uh, hazy IPAs with spicy food. Yeah, that's my yeah. favorite combination. Mm -hmm. I'm not usually a hazy IPA girl, but I with spicy love food. Love it with spicy. Now, food. when I go spicy food, I have a tendency to prefer like a really crisp lager. Uh, something that just is kind of nice and clean I, to I would, sort of wash that down. So, man, I would get some blackened fish tacos and drink a barley wine with it. I don't have that. <laughs> that is why we love you, sir. That is why we love you. All right, we got to take a break. There is barley wine in your future, by the way. I know. I'm so and excited. That's, uh, I can tell. Uh, we're going to take a break and be right back. Uh, we're on the famous front porch with Abby and Jim on this system. It does. back it is smug and toasted and we're doing all of those things here on the famous front porch with jim and abby heim now um jim is it coincidental that your daughter grew up and wound up uh, working for one of the coolest breweries in the greater houston area or is it does something run in the family here because i know you're a craft beer guy have been for a long time indeed uh it was something that uh, we've been planning for Abby's <laughs> career since she was four years old. This is your retirement plan? I love the way you think. Actually, uh, yes, it is, because I certainly don't have any money. Yeah, well, money. but the reality is it might not be the most, you know, um, lucrative financial plan for retirement, but at least you'll have beer, yeah. right? Yes, and I, I always have beer here, for sure. So, it's a good thing to note. Now, uh, Abby, you told us that Denali, which is a West Coast IPA from Great Heights, this is something you guys made a while back, mm -hmm. but you have not made. Yes, we in haven't a while, made it in right? probably three years or so. Uh, it's definitely one of our regulars' most requested. Uh, so, so this was like a seasonal fun. or a temporary. It one, was right? used to be one of our core beers. Uh -huh. um, it's got a long story uh, where we used to we called it Denali because the hops that we used were Denali hops in a little mosaic. 
but Denali, they weren't allowed to use the name Denali anymore, so that changed to Sultana. Was that because of uh, 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 the motor company I, that has the I'm not sure SUV who, called Denali? I'm not GM. sure who placed the cease and desist yeah. on it. I That could be yeah, the could guy. Be. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, and then we, we played with it for a while and then we kind of just retired it and we were ready to play with some new stuff, but because the demand for it was, you know, pretty high, we thought we would, uh, treat everybody for it for our seventh anniversary, Do which you, we just celebrated this, has, last this Saturday. This has a very, you, you described this earlier as a, as an aggressive, uh, West Coast IPA. It has a very aggressive, uh, bitterness yeah. yes. on the end. Mm -hmm. It does, and it is that. also it's, one of, it's a staff favorite. For it sure. is also, however, balanced with a nice, uh, nice round mouth feel and some nice malty mm. um, sweetness up it's, front. It's almost spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not in a pepper so, way, like not, the, not uh, in a pepper <laughs> way, but but yeah, no, I know what you mean. Now, I'm just curious. When you guys got the, your cease and desist on this, mm -hmm. was it over Facebook? Uh, well, we didn't get the cease and desist. <laughs> uh, I would assume the hop. Uh, company oh, did. I got now you. we have gotten a cease and desist straight down from the MLB when we put out our Hey City. Yeah. <laughs> they said that our cans look too much like the jerseys. Uh, uh, okay. So we had to change our label. Well, we got a <laughs> cease and desist once over Facebook, and I'm still thinking it probably wasn't a legitimate cease and desist. <laughs> but uh, that's another story. Yeah, for, for, another, for another day. <laughs> um, so, so you call this Denali again? You changed it at one point. Or did was we, it just the name of the hops that changed? Yeah, we just na changed the name of the hops. Uh, okay. Well, they, uh, they I would the assume name it was Yak you know Yakima Chief or whoever owns those rights to those hops. Um, they're they're the ones that changed it to Sultana. Okay. Um, and then after that, we were just were ready to play with some like different um, you know combinations, and so we moved on from Denali. But now we're back. So is it back full circle for an uh, extended period of time, short period of time? I have not been privy to that. Okay. Right now it's just a short period of time. Well, this is really good. And it is very, you know, uh, I'm, I'm such a fan of the New England style IPAs oh. and tend to be a little bit pickier about the West Coast, even though I like pretty much all IPAs. But to me, this is a great example of a West Coast, just because of so, what Ian was saying about... Uh, about the balance. There's I almost, enjoy the bitter, but I don't want it to become the only there's factor. There's still a little fruity in There's it, almost it's a not grittiness to the bitter that I kind of enjoy in mm -hmm. this. And it's something you get when you're, when you're uh, like, if you enjoy something like Stone or like those right. those other very aggressive West Coast IPA, it's something that's kind of common to that. This has that kind of grittiness on the end. It leaves it interesting, even though it's bitter, mm -hmm. right. without just being bitter, you know? Absolutely. It's not, it's not, we went through this, phase of IPAs when the uh, style became really hot where it just seemed like everybody was trying to out up everybody else. Oh yeah. This we doesn't get feel like it's playing IBUs that game. Into yeah. Something? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's playing. That's when I ran back game. to loggers. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And and that makes a lot of sense, but it, that <clears throat> seems to have worn down a little. People seem to now be thinking much more in terms of balance and you guys were way ahead of the curve with it on Thank this. You. So, yeah. This is really good. So, you have um you have this back how many how many new styles or, or new beers i should say do you guys put out in an average year if you had to guess oh well i guess i want to say on the average like once a one a month so maybe anywhere from nine to twelve yeah uh if we're maybe we double up but sometimes we just bring back ones that have done really great for us like right in now past, sure. we have yeah. the gardenia drive you said you like um east coast or uh, hazy's, uh, yeah, hazy's or yes. the new england style which mm -hmm. is a Ver really like a vermont style mm -hmm. so um yeah we uh we definitely do ipas you guys well. had one that was uh like a fruity pebbles kind of that's thing. fruity pellets Fruity yeah. Pellets. Yeah, like, we get that all the time. We, we reference it pellets. all the time, yeah. Yeah, no, Fruity Pellets is our flagship, and uh, that is our best seller for a reason right there with it's, our blue tile. It's funny because anytime I taste a beer that has that quality now, it immediately has to be compared to yeah. your beer. Because that was the first one that's, you yeah. tasted uh -huh. that really had that. The, sort it of, was really, and, and just a solid beer overall. So that's a Coraline beer. Yeah. How is many that cool you guys have? Uh, so really, it's like our Lagerish Kolsch, our Blue Tile IPA, our Fruity Pellets. You can usually always find our Hefeweizen. Um, Strikes and Gutters is another American IPA where uh, that you're gonna, that's pretty much a core beer. It, it's and, uh, only and, gone for a short time. And do you have back. a favorite? 
Uh, strikes and gutters. Strikes and I gutters. love that one. It's a very right. balanced. It leans west coast, but the clarity on it is really pretty. And um, I'm a big uh, fan of Strata. That's my favorite mm -hmm. hop. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the more prominent hops in that. All right. We'll talk more about it when we come back. It's Smoking and Toasting live on the famous front porch. I can't say it, but that's where we are. Famous well, front you porch. could just say famous porch. Famous, famous. porch. <laughs> and that would be more accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting. We are on the famous porch with Jim Heim and his daughter, Abby, because it is uh, Bring Your Dad to the Show Day. Thank you for bringing your dad. Uh, or I guess really you didn't bring him because this is where he lives. But uh, it's... I just walked out the front door and I was here. <laughs> it's all good. I didn't say that where you could hear it. Uh, so welcome back to the show. we got a lot to talk about. We I still want to talk a little more about this Denali. Yeah. Because before, before this beer, my only association with Denali was a... A big SUV. And I kind of prefer this beer to the big SUV, to be totally honest with you. Uh, so, but I want to get back to that. First of all, it's time for uh, our drinking facts. So if you would do the honors, please, Terry. And now it's time for another smoking and toasting drinking fact. Thank you, Terry. Our drinking fact is a, an actual fact I picked up somewhere uh, about uh, somewhere about yeah, something. Yeah, but, uh, but no, these are these are really true facts. Don't fact uh, check today's. <laughs> you can fact check it as far as we know. Today's fact check is, or today's fact I should say, is according to experts, alcohol consumption improves your ability to pick up and speak a foreign language. Como esta? Yeah. Let, <laughs> let's try it. Sí, Otra cerveza, cerveza, por favor. <laughs> Let, let's Boom. try it. Boom. Donde esta el corto de baño? Here's a phrase in Spanish that I will take a drink and then try to translate for you. Okay. <laughs> Is this the new Google Translate? Take yeah. A drink this this is cruise, cruise drinks translate. <laughs> All right. Esta puede ser la mayor cerveza del día. <laughs> See, si. wait. I think I've got it. Esta puede ser la mayor beer del día. I think you nailed it. Boom! Wow, it works. Actually, the title, uh, the the phrase is, uh, "This may be the best beer of the day." <laughs> it didn't Which, say you would translate the whole thing. It just right. said it would help That's you right. translate. Tra That's okay. you know, translations, much like the Rosetta Stone, they start with one. Yeah. One. Syllable at a time. Exactly. Basically. Or in this case, one word. Beer. One word, yeah. Cerveza. I do under start to understand people better as we drink more through the night. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it's true. See, you know, yeah, so you drink enough, you enter a state that I like to refer to as the knowing. <laughs> right? Which is a slippery gray line, because once you enter the knowing, soon after is going to be the forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> And then comes time travel when you wake up, you're like, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> These are stages of inebriation. But the knowing definitely the exists. The knowing definitely, definitely exists. exists. <laughs> and maybe this is where the, you know, the learning languages <laughs> part right. uh, does its does You'll its tell people lifting. the same thing over and over again because you know that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad it's all about immersion. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and, it, and, and it should be. And it should be. That's another uh, word we don't know what it means. So, you know, so the, the uh, line actually means this may be the best beer of the day. And so I'll be waiting for you to say that later when we try the barley wine. Okay. But we you'll have to say it in Spanish. We got to practice. En Espanol. <laughs> yeah. I know there's, there were a lot of words in that. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll work on that. We'll work on that, yeah. Uh, first nominees have been announced for the Craft Beer Hall of Fame. Remember we told you that the Craft Beer Hall of Fame was a thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that it's going to happen. And we even had, we even had a list of top five uh, breweries we thought would be in there. Yep, mm. yep. So let's see what we got so far. This is news to me. Um, I have to look up my list. Uh, the complete there. list of nominees. Larry Bell has been nominated, the founder of Bell's Brewery. Oh, yeah. Bell's is pretty darn yeah. good. Yeah, that that makes some hearted. sense, right? Yeah. Uh, and the Oberon for that. Sam yeah. Caligione, the founder of Dogfish Head. Right. Uh, okay. Classic. Love the Dogfish Head. Yep. Uh, Ken Grossman, uh, the yes. founder of Sierra Nevada. Absolutely. And, and I'm skipping over a few here, but. Uh, I'm kind of pulling out the ones that I thought we would be most interested in. Uh, Michael Jackson, 
uh, because of the album Thriller, apparently. Uh, no, this is this is not that Michael Jackson. Uh, just for people that are still living. He's the uh, British guy that wrote the world the World Guide to Beer. He hosted also a TV show back in the '90s called The Beer Hunter, which which I'm sure is currently streaming on an app near you. Um, so let's see who else. Ah, Jim Cook, the founder of Boston Beer Company, introduced uh, Sam Adams beer to. Uh, those of us here in the United States. Jack McAuliffe, the founder of New Albion Brewing. Uh, Fritz Maytag, the longtime owner of Anchor Brewing. Oh, thank God they, that Anchor Steam is not going away. Uh, I'm so I'm so happy about yes. that. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Garrett Oliver was the brewmaster at Brooklyn Brewery since 1994. Right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Pete Schlossberg, or Schlossberg, sorry. Uh, I don't see that well anymore. Uh, he's the founder of Pete's Brewing and uh, the guy who debuted Pete's Wicked Ale. Yeah. Does that still exist? Does anybody know? Yeah. I used to yeah. I used to love Pete's Wicked Ale back in the day when there weren't as many craft beers around. Right. Uh, but a Pete's Wicked oh Pete's Wicked Summer Ale was always something I looked forward I to. I find every it summer. interesting because I'm listening to that list and I do remember I couldn't find my uh, list on my phone, but I do remember that uh, quite a few of those were either on mine or your list. Yeah, I think I think you're right. We we definitely touched on Anchor. We definitely touched on Sierra Nevada and uh, Boston and, Beer Company and Dogfish Head. And, right, and Dog yeah, Fish Head yeah, so all those and uh, on... nice to see Bell's was included mm -hmm. as well. Are y'all surprised to not see Russian River on there? A, a little bit, but again, this is only the first round oh, of nominations. Uh, round. So it's kind of like the you know the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. There's different ones right, nominated right. every year, and uh, maybe you have to have been brewing for a certain amount of time in order to be nominated so um so uh, speaking of russian river and pliny um have you ever tasted like a fresh one um i did get to recently because i got to go to my first great american beer festival oh nice oh. so i got to try it there but fresh do you mean like up in california because no i haven't made not, it that not necessarily we do, we've tasted one on the show before but it was yeah. a little post speak mm -hmm. uh, so uh yeah. i i'm still yet to taste and i've read so much about bottles it. too you know right. i haven't seen it in cans yet so they're gonna have that slight 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 if it's not you know being cracked the very next right. day it's gonna have slight light struck maybe so a little bit of skunkification me, me, yeah, yeah i'm not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but i would i would love to actually be able to visit the brewery and me too. Have that it right is out definitely a bucket list. To sweet, me, you know, sweet people too. To me, that would be a thing. Um, uh, so, what we're talking about list? Mm -hmm. What would what would be on yours? Places you haven't been, uh, breweries or distilleries, perhaps that you yeah. haven't visited that you would like to? Definitely Sierra Nevada. Uh, I have to give my heart out to like, of course, Asheville right now because I really, really would love to be able to visit Sierra Nevada and Asheville. Um. Yeah, that that right there, <laughs> Sierra Nevada. Uh, that's a, that's but, a doable that's, bucket list, yes, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I'm uh, sure I don't so know. You don't have name. to pay for the ticket. There's what, so many to name. What What about you, Jim? Any places that you've you know thought, man, I I would really love to to visit that one, brewery or distillery. Nope, pretty much been to all of them. Okay. <laughs> he likes to just stay in Texas. How about you, Ian? Uh, the original Guinness Brewery, I think, <gasps> in Ireland. Oh, very nice. Because uh, we went, uh, I took my wife to the uh, to the one in Baltimore. And how was that experience? experience? Well, we had fun. We had a good time. Uh, however, um, we booked the uh, flight, and then a month after we booked the flight, they decided they were not going to brew beer at that location anymore, and they're moving their brewery to Chicago. So, so was it just like we, a tap room? What we then? went was to it? was a former brewery slash tap house. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. That, you know, all the fun was there. It's a beautiful facility out there. Uh, yeah, we had some uh, we had some uh, uh, footage from it on our show. Uh, that would definitely be one. But I'd love to see Founders. I'd love oh. to see Bells. I'd love to go to uh, uh, just for the just for the. I used to drink this so much when I was young. Um, uh, uh, what's the one in Colorado? I'm blanking on. Uh, uh, Deschutes. No, no to shoot to Oregon. Oh, you're right. That's all. That would be oh, the one I should have mentioned. Yeah. Avery, New Belgium. New Belgium mm -hmm. is a good one. Yeah, Avery. I would love to see. I want to see. I because I live in a microbrewery. I want to see a big, big, big 
brewery. I want right. to see like seven story <laughs> permanent. Oh yeah, <laughs> Re- real ale's pretty fun and black. Oh, yeah. real ale's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I stop so by there anytime I drive through, yeah. so yeah. I couldn't put it on my bucket. And I will just mention to those because all of us here on the show live in Texas, and you may be in this area. Do not sleep on Guadalupe Brewing Company in- outside of New Braunfels. That place you is back. amazing. Is She's you very yeah. good people out there. Brought back oh beers from there. We can't get them at the stores. You <clears throat> brought back beers from there. Every one of them was stellar. Yeah, I like not just good, but them. like wow. Yeah, they are absolutely. such sweet people, and they're very particular about who they allow have their beer on top because they have to trust that they're going to be taking care of their lines. And I was able to order them when I used to work as a buyer, and they're very sweet, sweet people. Yeah. So you, you see it in that beer, and, so you can guarantee And their be beers are just outstanding. And I tried three or four other ones while I was there that I didn't bring back, and I'm just telling you. Uh, and not only that, but it's an amazing place. Have you ever visited it? It's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like a compound almost. There's a an area with a stage. There's a, a different... Uh, tasting rooms there's an area where they're you know uh, preparing food and because it's so hot there in the summer they've got misters and all the like, uh, all the areas and so and it's just it's there's plants and cacti and it's just absolutely Gorgeous. beautifully done you uh, know what doesn't work as well here in houston what's that misters yeah it's too humid. I, I thought <laughs> it would be a great we, idea. We I have a, a natural my, misting going on I here. I set anyway. them up my patio. The humidification. Yeah. And it just made everything wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have one of those little portable water cooler things that sometimes I will turn on outside my... Uh, uh, you know, outside on the porch when I'm working, and all it does is just makes it feel like I'm sweating more. <laughs> well, we sure don't need it today. Yeah. Oh, no. This is beautiful. This is so nice. Yes. Of course, November in Texas is... I always say this is when people come down here from the north to visit, and it's already cold and snowing, and they're like, oh, my God. And so they make plans to move here, and they arrive about July. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what have my I favorite done? Time, my, favorite, my favorite thing is when they when they get here in the July, and they're like, wow, is it always this hot? I was like, wait till August. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's hot. It is well, hot. now September. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's that. All right. Well, before we get uh, too far away from talking about beer and, and still enjoying <laughs> this Denali, by the way, I, I really hope you guys keep this. I hope this is a, an ongoing. It's really yeah. excellent. I hope it stays around. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely love it. Um, the question of the day, since we're all fans of the beer, uh, does beer make you fat? No. Yes. No. Does it store or maybe. your fat cells? I mean, it does, but I'm not going to admit it. <laughs> well, I mean, do spoons make you fat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty gotta... sure. I'm pretty sure the blame lies in yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. So, interestingly enough, I had this whole article I was going to present to you, uh, and now it wants me to uh, subscribe in order to be able to see. The Let article. me ask you this: So, does beer? And a steak dinner every night make you gain weight? Well, okay. So this is, I did read this article. And basically one of the things that it points out is that uh, co- consumption of beer in, you know, a certain amount of moderation doesn't. Like any food or drink that has calories in it, if you, you know, consume a whole lot of it, it, it will, yes. But uh, one of the things that they pointed out in the article is that beer can often make you want to eat as well. Oh yeah, and then that is one of the Beer things that is to, more leads to Jack in the Box tacos. Oh. <laughs> and they're so wonderful and whiskey, with beer, also. <laughs> and yeah. whiskey, right. yeah. it's funny how beer never seemed to make Keith Richards want to eat. Well, <laughs> I don't know that it was beer, but yes, I, 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 I'm with you. And and you know, Keith Richards. I mean, one day there, when he finally does pass away, I hope he donates his body to science because there is much <laughs> to discover. T- you know. Yeah. Well, I, I just got to figure, you know, he knows something none of the rest of us do. Yeah, he's on his own. Yeah. And, and I think it's, he, he doesn't care. <laughs> he tells you people all right. the time what the secret is. They just don't understand him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, bud? <laughs> right, Mick, right, You got it, Keith. In, that, in <laughs> that, that was the secret to life. You just didn't catch it. <laughs> oh, it's nice to know. It's nice to know he's got it figured out. Yeah. And and honestly, um, 
I've seen the Rolling Stones a couple of times, both times oh, after they were incredibly old. I never saw them like when they were younger. I saw them when they were incredibly old. And I'll just say this. It would do a lot of the younger bands today good to go and watch a Stone show. Because oh, yeah. Mick still hits that stage and sings Honky Tonk Women like they recorded it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. he just absolutely, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, hits it with everything that he's got. And they're just an absolutely like amazing. They don't have to have this huge, incredible, crazy stage show with video screens. I mean, they'll have some of that. But that's not what it's about when you see the Stones. It's about them rocking out. Yeah. And uh, And I'm not necessarily the world's... Huge Stones fan, like I don't collect stuff and all that, but boy, do they bring it live! Man, I have a uh, customer of mine that he has an old '60s telly that he laid on me. He goes, "I want this set up like Keith Richards." So I took <laughs> off the little E string because Keith Richards doesn't mess with that. <laughs> right? You only need five strings apparently to be that awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then tuned it to Open G, and I was sitting there playing in a, in a video for my customer so he could hear what it sounded like. And I couldn't stay, like, everything I played sounded like Honky Tonk Women. Like, it just, <laughs> like it, just, it just oozed it. It was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. There's a there's a certain guitar sound that you can actually identify as the Keith Richards sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's just absolutely, other people can do it, but you know what it is they're doing. Yep. They're doing the Keith Richards thing. So I don't know how, how we got that far afield on the Rolling Stones, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> really, 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 no, no, that's no, what it was. That's it was how we did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you always see those articles. You'll, there'll be an article about, you know, some woman who lives in West Virginia and she's 107 years old. And they'll always ask her, what's your secret? And I'm not kidding you. More often than not, it has to do with having a beer or some whiskey every day. Yeah. And bacon. And bacon, yes. <laughs> and bacon. So that is our message to you, listener. <laughs> beer, bacon, and whiskey. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> Perfect. Ah, uh, yes. Love that sound. Welcome back. It is Lovely. Smoking and Toasting. We are on the uh, front porch, one of my destinations uh, here in Houston when I want to uh, smoke a cigar or have uh, something cool to drink, mostly because Jim and I will solve the world's problems during that smoking and drinking session. At least half of them. Yeah, at, le- at least. A, a good, a good, you know, half to three quarters, I would 55%. say. 55%. Uh, so because we were talking about destinations uh Bucket list de- destinations in the last segment. I wanted to share with you an article from Vine Pair about what they picked as the world's top 10 beer destination for 2024. And I found some of these to be a little surprising. So uh, let's go through the list. Right. Top 10. Number 10, they chose, and I never would have thought of this as a beer destination, Johannesburg, South Africa. Apparently, huh. there's a burgeoning uh, craft beer scene in Johannesburg. So that's. Oh. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, that'd be fun to visit. Mm-hmm. How about Athens, Greece? I've never been to Greece. I'd love to go. I haven't. My uh, sister went there recently. Beer production in Athens. Got a keychain from it. Beer production in Athens dates back to 3300 BC. I bet those were women making it. I bet they probably were. That's when that's when people learn to sit in one place instead of wander around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if you're going to sit in one place, might as well have a beer. With you right? uh, you got to you got to let it sit in one place to let it ferment, right? I don't think I would stray Did Plato far say from that? Greece. Yeah, I sit in one so. place and drink. I think that uh, is a direct thing from soccer. I believe it is. Uh, number eight on the list is Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. Ooh, and, okay. Beautiful. Yeah, and it is a beautiful place. And apparently, uh, they have got. Uh, a uh, pretty uh, up and coming craft brewery scene there, which is something I've always wondered. Like I love, um, haven't been there in a couple of years, but my wife lo- and I love to visit this little place down in Mexico. But one of the things I've noticed, uh, although it's a great place to stay, is it can be hard to find really good craft beer down there, and it makes me wonder what is the craft beer scene like in uh, Mexico and other South like American Mexico countries? City, somewhere where there's yeah. a lot of people and stuff. Right. I think they're coming to do a, a drop off a of beer at your house. <laughs> Um, number seven on the list is Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, I in just the United States, moved there. the American Midwest. People. Yeah, they say uh, is pretty synonymous with beer production, led by like uh, Milwaukee and Chicago. But tucked away in Minneapolis are over forty 
craft breweries. Wow. wow. So that would be, that sounds like a fun So that means weekend. the next well, time I go visit my brother, he lives in International Falls. Mm -hmm. So the next time I visit my brother, I'm going to fly into uh, Minneapolis and spend a few days there. I'll, I'll guest toast when you do that. Well, it does sound like fun, doesn't it? Shout out to my uh, friends at H-Town Beer Guys that just moved up to Minneapolis. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're awesome. Did they'll, they... be, they'll be changing their names. They are. They're going to be changing their names here sh soon. So they moved the, they're moving the brewery. Well, no, these are just one of, some of my favorite um uh, bloggers, beer bloggers, okay. H Town Beer Guys. I used to live okay, here nice. right on the East End, um, and they have recently relocated to Minneapolis. And that just, sounds like they're going to be right in their element. Be M Town Beer yeah. Guys, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. well, they got they got forty to start with, so that's okay. not a bad deal. Number six on the list. I've never been. I'd love to. Queenstown, New Zealand. Oh, oh wow. we use a lot of yeah. New Zealand hops at Great House. And they, I think you have to have $5 million to go to that one. Yeah, but boy, is it well spent, I think, when you get there. Uh, they show a picture on this article, and it's just these people sitting around at like picnic tables, eating and drinking beer, and they have this huge banner that says, Beer for the Bold. Nice. I like that. That, uh, mm -hmm. that totally works for me. Uh, number five, and I have been here, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States. Uh, there are some great craft breweries I was, uh, in Albuquerque. I was in Santa Fe. Recently. Yes, Santa Fe as well. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have any craft breweries. Oh no, in Santa Fe. Oh, that's come true. on. Santa Maybe Fe they had one. I, I think Santa oh, Fe. Oh, Santa Fe craft brewery. I think Santa, 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 yeah. yeah. Santa Fe. We had, Santa Fe is we had one of on the show because remember when my buddy, uh, when my buddy Adam came back from California, he stopped mm -hmm. and picked up. Uh, some Absolutely. Santa Fe beers. It's the Absolutely. only one. And I said, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good brewery. Well, I stopped Santa Fe brewing when I was. Up there on a, a very interesting uh, road trip a couple of years ago. Oh, that's right. And uh, and man, it was great. It was awesome. Number four on the list is Charlotte, North Carolina. <gasps> oh, Charlotte. In the United States. I go there often. Uh, yeah. What bur burial? Burial. Apparently, burial. after uh, COVID, Charlotte experienced a big influx of new residents. So the whole area has been growing, and growing right along with them has been uh, uh, the craft brewery scene. So mm -hmm. I don't see Shout out to and th what's that? We don't want coronavirus. We're moving to Charlotte. I guess so. Or, or maybe after it was okay to move around again, that's where people went. I think people had the, time to sit and think about it. Yeah, we're where am I going? Charlotte. I'm thinking Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, honestly, it, it makes a lot of sense uh, that there are still spots where craft brewing is growing. You hear a lot about closures and and uh, breweries shutting down and the craft beer scene slowing down a little bit. But there are still spots. There are still places. Where it's growing, maybe they were later to the scene. Maybe they're just they have a more enthusiastic community. Maybe hard seltzer hasn't become a thing there. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, number three on the Isn't list: there a place where hard seltzer doesn't exist. Uh, one could only drink utopia. Yeah. Uh, number three on the list is Hanoi, Vietnam. That's uh, cool. I, I would I would you love to visit. Never guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, now I've heard a lot about this next one, and I have never been. I really, this is definitely on the bucket list for me. Is Vancouver, British Columbia, oh, yeah. in Canada, yeah. uh, and their booming beer scene boasts two hundred and fifty craft breweries, most of which have opened within the last ten years. They like wow. beer, eh? Yeah, they absolutely <laughs> do. And number one on their list is London, London, England. Oh, uh, they say that uh, with the trademark pub culture. London seems like an obvious beer destination, uh, but the city has never allowed itself to get comfortable and continually pushes the boundaries of what it means to brew great beer. All I know is every time I'm watching an episode of Ted Lasso and there's always a scene where they're in the bar, and they're having a couple of beers. I think I want to be there. Where do you get time to watch this much TV? Oh, uh, it, 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 it's simple. You just don't do other things like work. Oh, well, <laughs> All right. Speaking of work, we got to take a break, pay a few bills here. Uh, we'll be back with our number two, Drinking News, still on the way. And we have more to taste, including, uh, a, a, speaking of England, a British style barley wine. So we're excited about that. And it's coming up next. This is my little toast. Smoking and toasting on the famous front porch. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. It is Take Your Dad to the Show Day. So we have uh, Abby Hahn from Great Heights Brewing, and she's here with her dad. She's passing dad a beer, which is, you know, a good way to win. Uh, 
Daughter points, I would guess. I'm his favorite daughter. <laughs> That's good to know. That's good to know. I'm his only daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you are the only one that brings him beer. So, <laughs> so you got a lot going for you is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say. Jackson doesn't bring him beers. <laughs> yeah. See? See? <laughs> All right. Now it, just got, <laughs> now it just got to trying to be a okay. child. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the thing, I'm Jim. The oldest. Between cuts your lawn and brings you beers, which which is the winning hand? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have a beer. yeah, okay. I love you, Jackson. Especially for this show. Don't forget your mic. Here's Jackson. Here's Jackson. Here's the fresh cut lawn. All right, so while we're toasting, we might as well try. Oh, this. Talk about smell this. This, this is uh, from Great Ooh. Heights. Abby, tell us oh, what we're tasting. This, this smells mm. amazing. Um, it's... Yeah, you're definitely going to get some chocolate on there. So it is an imperial stout. We're doing that with cocoa nibs, vanilla be beans, and uh, coconut. So we really wanted you to kind of get the uh german chocolate cake uh mm -hmm. essence from that uh yes. we made this for our seventh anniversary moonless on a on moonless prairie night i know it is a lebowski reference yes. as a lot of our beers are lebowski references another reason another you know, reason like why i love we <laughs> another reason why i love your brewery mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody that will just hang with Lebowski references. This just about brings a tear to my eye. This is oh, amazing. Oh, thank you. This is really, this really is good. very, very, very limited at the brewery right now. Mm -hmm. I do not expect for this to hang around long at all. So this is not one people can find at retail. You'd have to mm -hmm. come to the brewery. No, I think you really have to come to the brewery But for can this. we yeah. carry away cans if we come yes, to the Yes, absolutely. We're selling them singly. Uh, they're $8 a, a can. I have a one-gallon growler. I won't fill it. <laughs> oh, I wish I could. But uh, come in, try this. Uh, what do y'all think? What are I, some of the notes y'all are getting? I, well, I think it's fantastic, but it's, I'm a huge fan of chocolate cake. It's so. chocolate. It's vanilla. It's uh, yeah. There's a touch of coffee on the back. I there's... just love how the cooks not artificial. You know how sometimes yes. you can get coconut in your beer? Oh, the coconut, especially on the get, retro like, a hill. Suntan lotion. 100%, yes. And that is not here. The <laughs> coconut is actually more subtle than the chocolate. And usually in beers where they remind you of German chocolate, that's flipped. Yeah. The we coconut is more prominent. Flakes. We didn't use any extract on that. I think you guys made this to go with the cigar, too. Thank you. Okay. What, what, what do you what smoke well with this cigars? This is so good. Thanks. What are you smoking now, Ian? Yeah, what are you having? I just lit up the uh, HVC Edition Especial 2015. It looks beautiful. beautiful. Kicking around in my humidor. And yeah, it is, that looks it beautiful. It is a delicious cigar. I don't think I've seen that cigar. Smooth. Uh, also, this guy does pack a little bit of a punch. It's 9.5%. Uh, wow. I will start drinking more slowly. Or as, or as Ian puts it, or as Ian puts it, oh, a morning beer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Joe, we're good. Mm. Well, you know, uh, there was a comedian once, I, I don't think you can say his name anymore, that gave breakfast to his kids was chocolate cake, and he justified that. So yes, I think Ian yes. justifies this as chocolate cake for yeah. breakfast. Here, here, that here. is here, great. Here, here. Hey, hey, here, here. We're drinking chocolate cake. <laughs> Yeah. It's just, You've it's, seen that one before. I have. <laughs> yeah. A lot of smoking and tubs. This it is, Abby, this is, this is fabulous. This is just, uh, this is one of the better stouts I've ever had. It's yeah. just the, the Like, the carb on this is perfect. The mouthfeel on this is perfect. Like, this is just hitting all the boxes. Our, our head brewer, Phil, um, he's been our head brewer for, like, over a year now, and he was a, uh, with us before as brewer, and he got uh, moved up, and Literally everything he touches is just that much better. Like it's, um, he does, you ask him why. I mean, he really cares. You know, I could ask this question maybe about great chefs or great, you know, uh, uh, bartenders as well. But what is it about someone you're describing like him that he just, where is part of it instinctive? It isn't just knowledge, right? Because, yeah. because it, that knowledge could be learned by, a lot of different people in a lot of different places. Is there something instinctive? Does he just know? Uh, yes, and he listens. <laughs> yeah. There's a science component like, yeah. to it as well that mm -hmm. you have to blend in with the... 100%. With the love and the, and, and and the passion. He's, he's uh, all about consistency, and, uh, you know, we do a lot of testing back there uh, before we, we put it to sale. I will say about Great Heights, like, we won't put anything out. We don't believe in and uh test of that is our oktoberfest got ruined during uh all of those storms that we went through at the beginning really? of, wow. of the fall and we pasted it out of the bright tank or, or maybe out of the fermenter i think the fermenter got too hot and we could just taste the smallest off flavor even just for us and we immediately started over all right so 
Let me ask you this question. How mm-hmm. much beer is that? That's 30, a lot. I think it was 30 barrels. Oh, that's oh, going to make me Yeah, die. absolutely. Ian so, says, next time, just tell him, and he'll come <laughs> take it off your hands. I'll yeah. fill his, his gallon growler. Beer. Listen, <laughs> sometimes we will buy seconds on the cigar market, you know? Cigars that weren't quite perfect, but can still be enjoyably smoked. I'm sure that Oktoberfest could have been enjoyed. On I've, had, I've, I've bought six packs of clearance beer, and it's not a good thing. No, no you're right. You're right. Well, well, let me ask this, though. When you stumble across, that sounds like it was accidental. When your brewer creates something this amazing, and it's so limited, how how do you not say... We must find a way, even if we have to sell it at twelve dollars a can. We must find a way to make this regularly available. Like, how does that decision get made? Because it's so good. Uh, tank space. Yeah. And uh, ingredients. You know, this one is like heavily adjunct, and I know that it took him time to like. I think he like soaked even the cocoa nibs and vanilla beans i remember going into the walk-in and finding these jars of just like <laughs> and he said don't touch those <clears throat> like i would um but uh, uh, so sometimes you know it just has to do with what uh what time we have the ingredients uh what's on our schedule whenever my brewer is like um having to put together a brewery schedule for the month uh he says it's like oh uh, like you know when you put it in your head like, and you just have to connect all the dots. He has to like move stuff around where right. somebody's like, hey, I want you to brew this. And it's like, uh, okay, that tank we'll is filled for We'll have to do that here, yeah. Yeah, this tank is filled for this long. And now I've got to, it's like Charlie uh, on Sunny trying to like move stuff around. <laughs> now these take, this this type of beer takes longer anyway, inherently, right? So um, it's not as it's not as quick to turn yeah. around as say like an IPA or something. I'd, I'd say so. I would I would imagine so. I mean, it's still an ale, right? Because you know we're still talking stouts, mm-hmm. so it's not like that it has to like age <clears throat> or anything, and it's not a barrel aged by any means. So it might have taken us maybe a little over two weeks. That's amazing that it's this good and it's not even barrel aged. Yeah, you know because a lot of times it's that aging because we try a lot of stouts and some of them we get and, and I will tell you. Some of the stouts we try on the show, I'll get, you know, a, a, a bomber or even a 16-ounce can, and it's upwards of $30. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not something that is sort of mass market, if you will. It's definitely marketed to a specialty. I'm going to tell you, this will compete with any of those $30 16-ounce can or, or bombers that we brought onto the show, and some of them have been outstanding. Yeah. Don't Thank, worry you. Thank you. Thank you. But this is just as good. So here's <laughs> going to be my recommendation to you, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Mm. Put more of this out and raise the price. I'm not kidding. Love that. Thank you. I will absolutely pay right it. There. Yeah, I will absolutely Take pay Take my it. money. What is, uh, yeah. Do you sell these in like a four-pack or uh, No, single? we're selling them individually. In individual. How and much I is believe they're individual? $8. That's incredibly I mean, that, that, That's, so that's a steal. That yeah. is an absolute steal. Come up to the steal. top room. They're not going to be around long. Uh, yeah. I can't even believe that this is that fresh and that good like Out the barrel camp, right? aging thing i'm thinking about this on barrel aging and i'm thinking maybe it's just so good the way it is now that maybe you know there's there's no way to even mess with that i don't know that you could make this much better i really don't it's really good Thank i think you. we should drink this other can um, <laughs> crack it yeah I, I haven't gotten to do this so, yeah so. Okay, here, i'll, 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 I'll hold mic. the mic Ah, love well that done. Sound. That was that was very well good. done. Yeah, that was a good one. Well done. Uh, and we would just like to point out, uh, as we do uh, from time to time here on Smoking and Toasting, uh, all sound effects are real and legitimately made. We in, sacrifice we sacrifice a beer, an actual beer every any, time. I'm mm-hmm. gonna see if there's any lactose in this. I don't think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. All right, so you can check on uh, on stock. Yeah. I yes, I can. I can do right. real time for y'all. Okay. We're 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 loving this. this. Is so good. And and this just goes to show you that I, it remind it does remind me a bit. Remember when I brought that that peanut butter stout from Guadalupe, which we were uh, which we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. We were like, oh my god! Like, how can this be this good? This is that kind of good. It is just absolutely. We're trying to make sure Terry gets some more uh, stout here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Terry. That's no, good. You're good. You know, you guys understand that. We try to make sure Terry gets some beer because we don't want him asking for raises. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Abby <laughs> well, drunk. Uh, and I would like, like to say, I, as her dad, thank you for buying this beer. Oh uh, well, <laughs> absolutely. But but no, I'm not kidding. I mean, you you need to go back and tell them. We didn't just like it. We were raving this is, this about is so it. so good. Yeah. And there's there's no reason not to consider when else could you do this again. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't. So there is a touch of lactose. I uh, I just asked, any lactose in the stout? And I, my brewer says, yes, there is. It doesn't really come across like a lactose. It's just like, do you get a... I, I, I don't know why my brain goes here, but it was just like... Marshmallow, but not not really like toasted. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, well, because you can pick out a little of that vanilla mm -hmm. in balance to the chocolate. Yeah. And to me, weird. that's why this is so good. Uh, we've had beers that were like, and they were very good, but they were the sort of chocolate and coffee mm -hmm. bombs. And this one isn't so coffee-ish. Although there's a almost, there's a hint of it, but on the uh, on the retro hill, this one almost has a slight nuttiness to it too. And I know there's none of that in there, but it has kind of a Kind of that, and then on the aftertaste, there's a hint of astringency, almost like a pecan shell. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, of, like a little nuttiness kind of thing going and, on. There. And we we refer to that astringency uh, often on the show as what we call the Doritos effect, which is more please. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, makes you it makes you want more. You know, I, I have some Doritos in there. Y'all, <laughs> <laughs> it might go nice with the barley wine. Uh, uh, well, yeah, and we, we still have that to come, my friend. Oh, I, I'm, I, if. I mean, come on! If we're stepping it up each time, this is yeah. I don't know how you step up much from this though. This is this is going to be a tough a tough one to get higher than this one. It's quite lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so here's to me here's the uh, the sort of lesson from this. Uh, I mean, for those of you who aren't in the Houston area, I know we have listeners all over the country, even other parts of the world. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get to Houston to Great Heights and sample this but let it be an encouragement to you to try the items like this that are on the menus the local, when you yeah. go to your local go breweries the brewery. because there are beers like this being made everywhere and that's not to take anything away from great Heights, mm -mm. but there are beers like this being made everywhere and some of them are in the places really close to where you are so go and support these breweries try their off the menu type beers that are only limited into some of them are going to surprise you like this one did to us uh, i was i was expecting it to be good but wow thank yeah. you we'll take a break we'll be back uh we're right around the corner from drinking news and we have some whiskey to try too from ryan bingham's bourbon we'll be right back at smoking and toasting Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. Uh, we are on the uh, famous porch at Jim Himes' location. Abby, his daughter, is from Great Heights Brewing. And not only did Abby bring some beers, which we've been raving about, by the way, but she also brought uh, whiskey. And that's really interesting to me because um, tell me a little bit. So this is this is a celebrity spirit. But I have high hopes for it. This is Ryan Bingham's whiskey. Yeah. Tell us what you know about this whiskey, Abby. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that you can find it at Cowboy Surfer. Okay. Uh, so and... Cowboy Surfer is a bar here in Houston. <laughs> yeah, here in Houston, and, um... over on Memorial and Kingwood. Uh, I know that they use a lot of it in their uh, cocktail menu, mm -hmm. where they use the white for a lot of their uh, mixed beverages, and mm -hmm. the black is fantastic by itself, or just how any whiskey uh, drinker wants to have it, or in an old fashioned. Um, I don't know too many of the specifics, more just here to like say, like uh, this is a great Texas whiskey done by uh, Ryan, who really is a very sweet guy, um down to earth uh and we're just we're proud to have it over at cowboy surfer and so i just kind of wanted to introduce y'all to it well thank you for that and before we get into sampling i'd like to point out the difference between the pour that ian gave me and the one that he gave himself <laughs> just oh and see abby yours is even oh, uh, yeah. this is, but this, uh, no we call this an abby pour oh god okay. uh, well <laughs> no, i no, just no, wanted no, to no. mention i i'm actually a, a big fan of ryan bingham and We've talked a little bit about uh, on this the show today 
we've mentioned uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, you know the famous movie The Big Lebowski several times, and there is a definite Ryan Bingham and Jeff Bridges connection because Jeff Bridges plays in the movie Crazy Heart. He plays the guy that sings the Ryan Bingham song, right. Crazy oh, Heart, which, that, by it. the way, that's a great movie. You should mm-hmm. see it if you haven't. Uh, and it, you, listen, you should see anything with Jeff Bridges in it. Yeah, but, yes. dude, he's so good at being that yes. gritty kind of character. Yeah, yeah, he's just... That, Tron. He's fabulous. Well, in <laughs> the Tron wasn't necessarily gritty. Okay, okay, but I, I grew up with it. that being oh, really one of I'd still <laughs> see it. That was uh, what we call a string of consciousness. Yes, mm-hmm. I like Not it. Not a stream. A string. But a stream yes. of consciousness. And re- you know, if you pull the string long enough, it will unravel. Yes, and, yeah, we're, okay. and we're all connected. And that's exactly what's happening right here. So, Ian, you've been doing research on your uh, very generous spore. Uh, it's interesting. It's um, it's uh, it's a lot of vanilla, and there's a fruity note to it. Very nice. And a very buttery kind of Ooh. thing going on as well. Which means I like it. Yeah. This is also quite good. So my husband... Very smooth finish. Mm-hmm. Very smooth. Yeah, because no, I'm not getting that, bar- that burn. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you no, you're right. It doesn't have a big uh, a big burn on the finish, and uh, even the, the white whiskey is hug is very gentle. Very nice by itself. Um, one of the uh, great cocktails over at Cowboy Surfer is the uh, Bingham's Bramble, which my husband oh. got to develop, which I'm super proud of him for. Apples, green apples, and a little mm-hmm. green apple. Green oh, apples, I put vanilla. Just a- just a splash, like the tiniest drop of water in there, Ooh, just wanna, brought out the apple. I like, want to join you in that. Like instantly. Oh. Mm-hmm. So um, you were saying, so oh, the bramble. Saying, having- yeah, if y'all are looking for a really great cocktail, uh, uh, Bingham's bramble is going to be lemon, simple syrup, and it's muddled with blackberry and jalapenos and topped with Topo Chico, which we happen to be sipping on right now as well. Uh, so, yeah. Well, Ian, you nailed yep. it on the uh, uh, green apple. Yeah, if the you green apple. Yeah, a drop of water. I it's went wonderful. into uh, Cowboy Surfer for the first time uh, just last Thursday, actually. Some friends of mine were playing, so I ducked in there. and um, They have a lot of great bands. Caught, yeah, I caught their there. last yeah. set. I caught uh, Dana Cooper there uh, a while back. He was, and, uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. the first time I've been in there, and I think I drank Weller the whole time, um, which is you know, delicious. That's close to my heart. Keith's uh, grandmother always drank Weller and Water when she came mm-hmm. home and read her book and went outside and smoked a cigarette, read her book, Weller and Water in a tumbler, and then we would just talk about the world. There you go. Is he in South Carolina? No, Bon Bon. Bonnie. You remember Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie. Yeah. Oh, of course. See, to me, that's that's a big part of what the show is about. You know, people, people ask us, uh, or people ask me at least, you know, how can you do this stuff, you know, uh, too much alcohol is bad for you. Smoking is bad for you. I say there are elements of that that are true. But what is good for you is things like what Abby just described. You know, sitting and reading a book and enjoying, you know, allowing life to slow down a little bit. Because we all live such fast-paced lives. I, You know, when I was younger, I thought, fast-paced, that's what I want to do. I want to go, 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 go. I want to do, do, do. And you know what? These days, I don't want to go, go, go. I want to, chill, I want to chill chill, 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 and to be able to enjoy something like this whiskey. One of my wife's favorite things is um, she takes baths, <laughs> right? She loves to just go sit in the bathroom. Sometimes, whether she's stressed or she just wants to chill, and I'll pour her a whiskey and bring it in there to her. Oh, that's and so And she'll sweet. sit in there, and she'll have the light off, but she'll have some little, like, Candlelight yeah. kind of things going on. A whole aesthetic. She, yeah, she'll just sit in there and enjoy herself doing what she's doing. And I'll be outside smoking a cigar on the patio, and that's, you know. And life is good. That's all good. Yeah, you know. I've, I've done that when my wife was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> it works just as well. Yeah. Good. But there's something about when life slows down around you. <laughs> there's something about when life slows down around you, though, that is that is... I don't know. That's when, that's when life to me is the most worth living, is when you can sit and think, and sit and relax, and sit and enjoy sipping something wonderful, smoking something wonderful. To me, the health benefits of that far outweigh any of the health risks that might come with these things. Yes, you know? because this is a cerebral activity. It is. What we're doing here. 
You can sit down and crawl inside of your own head a little bit. And what I found is I'm okay with myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy entertaining myself. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You know? I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you this. People would very seldom mistake me for cerebral, but you're right. Engaging in this cerebral activity. I've never, I've never mistaken you for that. And I know that, and I appreciate that. <laughs> but, but being able to engage in that kind of activity is a wonderful thing. And this, by the way, is a wonderful bourbon. Thank it you. It really is. We haven't talked about it. In well, I would just, uh, just perusing over their menu here as we move into uh, Bingham's Black. Uh, South Side of Heaven is a bourbon, uh, Bingham's original bourbon and a Modelo or a Specifico or Bingham's Black bourbon with a Lone Star and PBR. Okay, that sounds wonderful. And, and it's we'll, $9. And we'll talk more about it's it when we come back. It's Smoking a Toast. Welcome back. It is Smoking a Toast. And our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and... Uh, I love those things. <laughs> Hand rolled cigars. <laughs> and we got a lot to do in this segment, so let's get right to it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for drinking news. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. A Florida man with one arm said he had a gator for a pet. When asked about his absent arm, he said, uh, We didn't ask anyone to do that. We didn't ask anyone to do you it. You usually but, ask me. Well, do you know what it is? <laughs> I had to take didn't, my gator. Didn't you sing harmonies with me? To the vet. Give her the last chord. When asked about his absent arm, he said, uh, Do I need to take my gator to the vet? I, I forget, guys. Drinking news. That works. Drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. I'm pretty sure the last time we did this with you on the show, we just uh, you and Jill actually sang Dang harmonies sing with me. Yeah, That's right. right. <laughs> Well, I miss her. She's well, so awesome. Cheers, y'all. You're a chip off the old blockhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a reminder, the drinking news is uh, stories that have been taken from real news sources across the world. Uh, they are sometimes, but not always, about drinking, but they are always best enjoyed if you've been drinking. And we certainly have, and will continue <laughs> to do just that. Oh, yeah. Now, before we get into today's main story for drinking news, I wanted to mention... That I've found, I think I found what I'm getting Ian for Christmas this year. Now, I know. Is it a pony? I know he's probably expecting a pony or some cigars or a nice bottle of something delicious, but something about those choices seems a little too easy and predictable. So I mean, no, no, it's, it's okay if you give me predictable cigars. Instead, Ian, I'm thinking of giving you something that is unique and that I am sure that you don't already have Lake Cuomo in Italy, has become a tourist hotspot ever since George Clooney bought a house there several years ago. And at a bookshop and a restaurant on the lake, tourists can now buy something they've never been able to before. It's a sealed can of air oh. from Lake Cuomo. <laughs> you can buy a sealed? This reminds me of when like people were selling their like contacts after seeing the Eras tour for Taylor Swift. <laughs> what is that a thing? Yeah, what? yeah, it did. These it was contacts for a were on eyes that saw Taylor. Yes, on the and that's tour. exactly what's the description. Wow, wow. I definitely bought some pet rocks. <laughs> <laughs> a spokesman for the PR company that dreamed up the air in a can souvenir says, "We wanted to create a reminder that people can easily take home in their suitcases." <laughs> Although he added, when the can's opened, it obviously loses its charm a little bit. So, Ian, I am certain that you will be the envy of all your friends when you show off this can of air at your next party. Do they have it in, like, an a, 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 a environment-destroying um, can? <laughs> like aerosol, aerosol, aerosol can? can? Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think so. Is it a click, think. like... Yeah, I think it's just a, yeah, yeah, it just yeah. opens. And trust me, it's nothing like my old college Or maybe roommate. a little sprayer, like a throat spray, like... Well, I, I can tell you this. I don't know the answer. We can improve on this. I don't know the answers to that, but I can tell you that it's nothing <laughs> like my old college roommate's trick of passing gas into a Pringles can and then giving it to someone. Oh. It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not like that at all. No, thank you. But our main story on this week's drinking news. Oh, that's not even the big part. <laughs> takes us from the fresh air. <laughs> our main story takes us from the fresh air, canned or otherwise, <laughs> from Lake Cuomo, Italy, all the way back across the pond. And lands us in the Sunshine State, where a Florida man oh, 
Margarita Man has made the news after being bitten by a shark. Now, I won't mention here that the odds of being bitten by a shark are actually remarkably low. They are one in 4.3 million, according to the Florida Museum of Natural History. Now, that's significantly more rare than a number of other things. The odds of being struck by lightning, for example, in your lifetime, one in 15,300. The odds of you winning a gold medal in the Olympics, one in 662,000. You know, the odds of me being last place in any of the running competitions are pretty damn high. <laughs> <laughs> the odds of dying from a bee sting, one in 57,825. And the odds of there being alien life, according to a study in 2020, 45 out of 100. Or 100. So imagine <laughs> being 28-year-old Cole Tashman, a Florida man. Florida man who is recovering from a shark bite while surfing in waist-deep water at the Stewart Rocks break off of Bathtub Beach in Stewart, Florida. <laughs> Bathtub Beach. Yeah, that's a real place. Those are words you're making up. <laughs> According to reports, a seven or eight foot tiger shark chomped down on his feet while he was in the water, forcing him to undergo two surgeries and received 93 stitches and 10 to 15 staples. Bastard tiger shark. Now, what's really remarkable about this incident is that 11 years ago, at the same exact spot, the Florida man no. was bitten by another shark no. when he was 16 years old. It, it was another one. It wasn't the same. It was not the same shark. God hates me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I survived being bitten by a shark at Bathtub Beach in Florida, I not only would decide to never go back there, I'd probably never go back to freaking Florida for the rest of my life. This is, this is what are like the that? odds of that happening twice? Well, when we tell you that yeah. we suspect that there's something in the water in Florida... We're right, and that something is a freaking shark. <laughs> yeah, and that guy to get bitten by it. The Florida man's doctor, Dr. Was Robert it, Borrego. Was it the same shark? No, it was not the same shark. <laughs> it could have been. Are you sure? They, how did they know? That shark's yeah. been waiting there for years. Yeah. <laughs> He's coming back. I know it. <laughs> the Florida that man's... was the best tasting person I ever had. <laughs> I'm waiting for this guy. Uh, the Florida man's doctor, Dr. Robert like Borrego, oh, sorry. of the St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach, said that Tashman is only the second patient he's ever had who's been bitten by a shark twice. The second <laughs> patient? The second patient. Wow. Yeah. This is yep. like that guy in the great outdoors. You, oh, you've been struck by lightning how many times? Six, yep. six, 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 66 times. <laughs> so this, of course, means that there was at least one other Florida man that this has happened to. And clearly someone is not paying attention to what Mother Nature is trying to tell So them. this guy's going to have to really step it up. I mean, Florida man, they've got it going, but he needs to get bit by a shark and then abducted by an alien, yeah. and then he wins. 40 out of 100. <laughs> Don't play footsies with a shark. But as crazy as it might seem to ignore the warnings of being bitten and to go right back into the shark-infested waters a few years later, there might, bathtub beach. there might just be a few things in life that would be crazier to try for a second time. And so, as a public service to you, the listener, and against the advice of major medical health professionals, we have come up with this top five list for you of things that just might be crazier to try for a second time than going back into shark-infested waters. Number five, that time I broke up with my ex but then got back together again. Uh, number four. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that fire hurts. Number four. Oh, that fire hurts. If if Taylor Swift won another award and then invited Kanye on stage to accept it with her. Never. <laughs> number three. Booking Fergie to sing the national anthem at a baseball game because surely it will have to be better this time. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Yes. Google it yeah, if you yeah. haven't. Oh, oh my God. My goodness. Uh, I'm fine with Roseanne Barr right there. Yeah, number two, me going to work for Clear Channel again, and the number one thing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the number one thing that would be crazier to try for a second time. Number one, 
buying tickets to see John Travolta in Battlefield Earth 2. Because what are the chances it could be as bad as the first one? (laughs) Reporting live from Bathtub Beach, Florida, where I just said, we're not only going to need a bigger boat, we're going to need to try to find a different place to surf. Like maybe a different ocean (laughs) on a different planet. My name is Cruz, and that, my friends, is your... Drinking News, Drinking News. That's our time for Drinking News. Cheers, y'all. I mean, there's a lot of beaches in Florida. Yeah, yeah. is that on the... On the what side of Florida? Uh, you could almost well, say... Because uh, I want to say Panhandle. You could almost say I have that a feeling, Florida yes. has beaches, <laughs> like, 80% of the way around it. Now, I he lived... has to go back to the same one. I lived in uh, the Florida Panhandle. I lived in Panama City for a while, and uh, we referred to our area as the Redneck Riviera. So that tells you a little something about Florida. That sounds right. Have you guys tried this whiskey yet? I just did, right at the end of drinking drinking this. And holy cow, it's good. That's called research, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) I'm dedicated. We're sciencing this. Uh, Ian, you're the whiskey expert. Give me your thoughts. Uh, I don't know if I'm an expert, but this is delicious. Mm. Um, so this actually, so it has some of the qualities the other one has. It has the butteriness right up front. Yes, it's definitely more oh, refined. Wow. It's definitely yes. the wood note in this mm-hmm. is prominent. Lots of vanilla. Um, I got vanilla on the nose. I love yeah, vanilla lots in of my vanilla, spirits, and this of, has got a lot of it. Mm-hmm. There's a, a, a like a like a kind of kiss of uh, powdered sugar kind of on the aftertaste. Oh, I love that. Yeah, just just a little bit that just shows up. Um, and it's funny because the powdered sugar can almost slip into cotton candy, but it's not quite there. Not, not as like sweet. Right, right. It's not. Yeah, it's it's, it's very interesting. It's, Probably with mm. the white though, like we were just talking about last night making an eggnog. <clears throat> but I mean, with the black, I, I, I the black is so good on its own. You don't yeah. need to do anything with it. But I'm a fan of eggnog, and I'm definitely going to use. Oh yeah, well, this, this, we have yeah. we have some eggnog in the refrigerator oh. already. It's only eighty, it's only 80 degrees still in Houston. Ian, I was wondering about adding a little water to this. You've just done that. So. We're we're gonna try it just because you know. I'm gonna. So this not? is the white. There's no distiller in the world who won't say, "Hey, open it up with a little bit of water." This, I don't know if any. Black. This is and uh oh, immediately. Okay, so immediately you add a little bit of water and you get a little bubble gum on the nose. Oh, see that's that's. A prominent thing, though, in whiskeys. Hmm, that's news. I, I don't know much about whiskeys, and I love to learn tasting in, notes. In bourbons. A little bubble gum? Yeah. We like to say that about water. Hefeweizens. Especially once you add water. It, um, it adds a little bit of uh, uh, mineral water taste to it. Like, immediately, the, the water itself, mm-hmm. right, you start tasting a little more of that. Which I actually like. I like that mineral water kind of aftertaste that you get in a lot of uh, whiskeys and scotches. Uh, and Ian, I appreciate you doing the the pouring honors here. We'll pass this one over to Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, so this I'm is pouring and passing. Is this the, the first lap. barley wine that you guys have done at Great Heights? No. Actually. No, you guys have had. I've had barley wine. Yeah. There. No, this is the second barley wine, the second version. We're known for our bourbon legend, which actually won us a GABF back in, I believe it was awesome. 19. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are known for our bourbon legend, but bourbon legend is an American barley wine, and we decided to switch it up and we did an English barley wine aged in this bourbon barrels. This smells so good. This is barley right off the front. Yeah. Now, Ian is probably the biggest fan of barley wine that I know. I love barley wine. And he's, I, love, uh, I love beer that's so sticky. If you accidentally spill on your table, whatever is attached to it, it's never coming off. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is like go down to Galveston, and Galveston Island has a great barley wine. And funny enough, those guys, uh, just to mention them, they won a GABF for an Oktoberfest. No kidding. Yes. Don't forget that. You get down to the island, try that. Wow, Ian. This brings it to you. This is, this is our seventh anniversary. The raisin and date. Oh, and, yeah. That's and, a good way to say it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's all the things that barley wine should be. It's sticky. It's sweet. It's well-rounded. It's hardly, I mean, it's. It it's would work on pancakes. Barely carbonated, oh, which wow, I love. Right. Okay, so I know I work for the company, but <laughs> um, yeah, the way you just say it would work on pancakes. Totally. It just it goes almost, down a little bit like. Right, yeah, there's, there's maple kind syrup. of a maple y kind yeah, of taste absolutely. to it. Mm-hmm. There's a kiss of uh, almost a chocolatey note as well on the retro hail. 
And we are talking about Great Heights' seventh anniversary. And it sure works with uh, and it's the cigar. It's it's creamy almost, sweet. And it, creamy. it really is. It's it it's just so nice. Well, I love this. another thing too, I I think I'm I think it's okay for me to give y'all some insider baseball on this. Uh, we did brew this uh, a little bit, or can we've been having it in the barrels, and then uh, we canned it and packaged it uh, for GABF. Uh, so it is that was back in October. So this is also have got has got to sit. You got the rest a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's gotten the yeah. rest exactly. JBF is the Great American Beer Festival, by the way, held mm -hmm. every year in Colorado. Uh, Ian, I, I'm going to challenge you now. I, I can't talk. I'm enjoying this. I'm going <laughs> to challenge you to go back to the uh, Bingham's Bourbon Black. I'm going to join you. And tell me what you find. I'll tell you immediately on the nose, I smell that apple again. Mm-hmm. Interesting because when I added actually from the first one from the white. When I added water, I didn't get apple like I did on the first one. But now that I've had this, I get a little bit of that just kiss of green apple. I get ooh. <clears throat> you know, Pink Boots, we got to brew our very first whiskey up oh. in uh Fredericksburg. We used now, we've had you malt. on We've had you on before to talk about Pink Boots. For those who didn't see that, mm -hmm. remind us what Pink Boots is and what it does. Oh, Pink Boots is an organization for women and people who are non-binary who are in the fermentation world that are looking to uh, um, network with other people in the same industry, but also our main focus is scholarship opportunities uh, so we can help advance our careers. Women in brewing has been growing. Oh, yeah. Brewing and distilling, by the way, has Brewing been growing a lot. Been growing substantially, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, this has been a pretty good year, not only for um, diversification uh, from a gender standpoint, but also from a racial standpoint, too. Yes. There's been a number of black-owned breweries that have uh, done a fantastic job of releasing excellent beers. Black is Beautiful was yeah. fantastic. Absolutely. Started here in Texas mm -hmm. by Weathered Souls, I believe. Yep, and, and uh, continues to become a thing all, all over the place. So we'll get back to a little more of that. I also want to talk a little bit more about going back and forth between this spirit and this barley wine uh, when we return for our final segment. It's Smoking a Toast. Welcome back. It has been quite a day for us. Quite a show here oh at the uh, famous porch at Jim Himes' resident. And Abby Heim has brought, uh, honestly, Abby, and, uh, you know, this might sound like just a kind thing to say to our guests, but everything you've brought has been amazing. Yeah. And it really, really has. Uh, the IPA was, I thought, just absolutely spectacular, wonderfully balanced. The stout of... Uh, uh, enough to make you cry. It's hard and to, now this, uh, now it's this hard barley. to imagine what was going to be better than the stout, the barley wine. This is such a beautifully traditional yet complex barley wine. It's yeah, I'm, I'm still getting different things out of it from a flavor note uh, perspective. It pairs you're, really nicely with the black. It sure does. You're a brewer. I just have to say, it's a good thing I'm married already because. Uh, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would be back. questioning some uh, things about my our life. Other brewer, so it's Bill and Gabe. <laughs> Uh, have great, great pedigrees behind them. Uh, Gabe came from St. Arnold. Uh, Phil has brewed over at Holler. He's brewed for us. Uh, he's worked his way up in our company, and he really does everything he does. He just does it like a, a touch better. Well, I'm not kidding. So this has all been so spectacular, and I'm going to uh, likely be swinging by on the way home to get some of that stout before it's gone. Is that just that's amazing? Thank you. In um, as our resident barley wine lover, how, how does this one rank for you? That's one of the best barley. So barley wines are kind of touch and go now. Not a lot of people make them even, right? So it's unusual to even find someone that makes one. When you do, it's almost always an American style, which is a little hoppy and can be okay. But the problem with the barley wine that's Americanized is that they take a beautiful barley wine and they stick a ton of hops in it. To me, the English style barley wine is what I'm talking about. It's a this little is, less carbonated, a, a little lot of people, less hot. Yeah, don't don't like it that much. It's thick. It's ridiculous. It's 
it's almost no carb most of the time. It's um, and when you say ridiculous, you mean sweet. wonderful. Yes, like I over love the it. top I ridiculous. Love wonderful. It. Yeah, because it's it's everything that a beer can be turned on to eleven. You know, yeah. it's uh, also thirteen percent. Well, <laughs> there's also that and you had Ian at thirteen percent. Thirteen percent is you know twelve to thirteen percent is where they generally start. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely love them. Uh, this this makes me think of some of the great ones I've had in the past. Like uh, Flying Dog used to make one yeah. called Horn Dog. Mm-hmm. Absolutely outrageous. I used to buy that all the time. And then you just can't find them very often. So uh, I'll be haunting your brewery. Abby, uh, not to put you on the spot with this, because I didn't ask if you knew this, but this, uh, this black, uh, uh, Bingham's Bourbon Black, do you know what a bottle of that retails for? Uh, I can find out for us very quickly. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and preference. I am not a Bingham's rep. I am a just a. Oh, I know. Bingham's this is just fan. something you. Yeah, this is something but you. Yeah, will, I can yeah. uh, definitely when, get that. Uh, when Ian said, "Yeah, she wants to bring a whiskey too," I was like, "Oh, well, uh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> right, Jim. Uh, every opportunity I get to enjoy the sports with you and enjoy smoking cigars, and I see you are down to the nub on yours. Wow. I am a professional. Uh, this yeah. is a questionable cigar. You, Do you're, not you're try this at home. guessing it was uh, warped. Is that right? No. No, it's uh, it's a uh, Roma Craft. A Roma Craft. That's right. right. You're guessing it's a Roma Craft. You weren't sure. It's kind of the mystery cigar. But uh, I just want to say every opportunity I get, yeah, All it looks it like a Roma Craft. All it was a gold over red footer on it. <laughs> I, I thought it was from Vietnam. <laughs> but I, it's probably not. Well... I just want to say every opportunity I have to hang out here on the porch with you has been a wonderful experience. And thank you for your hospitality. I love you, Cruz. Thank you for your hospitality, sir. This is wonderful. And thank you you too, Ian. I love you, Ian. (laughs) Yeah. Only less so than me. And Abby, I love you. Oh, thank you, Dad. Well, she probably wins in that contest. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Abby, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, we would, uh, uh, the the Pink Boots uh, whiskey that you mentioned? Yes. Uh, that's at Archray, uh, is where we got to brew that. Um, it'll be ready in three to five years. We're super proud of that. Thank you, Country Malt, for making the first ever Pink Boots malt blend. Uh, we're very excited to have that a part of our repertoire. And we will be here in three to five years to taste it with you. Yes. Hopefully more like three. I already uh, it. Have a great uh, day, everybody. Thank you for cheers. enjoying smoking and toasting Thank with you. us. And uh, cheers, y'all. Cheers, cheers y'all. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>